this is week three. Uh, so uh, the first thing I usually like to ask is, uh, how was the homework? Who found it uh, more than an hour's worth of homework? Did anyone find it kind of tough? Because it was, it was, I think it was pretty straightforward. Um, now you've kind of styled your, your personal websites a little bit, so that's, that's good fun. Uh, if you think the homework was manageable, that's great, because this week is going to be a little bit more challenging. Um, and so that's, that's going to be really fun. Uh, during office hours, unfortunately, nobody visited us, uh, which was kind of sad. But I'm sure plenty of people will be this Sunday. So by the way, office hours are indeed uh, 3 to 5 p.m. Sundays at the Free Speech Movement Cafe, which is right next to Moffitt Library. Uh, and we'll actually have a sign this time around. It'll look like this, except that it'll be a lot bigger. So you'll be able to see it. But otherwise, you know, it'll say Web Design Decal Office Hours. It'll probably be made out of cardboard. It'll look really cool like that. So just look for that if you go to the Free Speech Movement Cafe, uh, and we'll be waiting for you. So uh, are there any general questions about web design or anything we've gone over in the course, or any uh, terminology that I've used that doesn't make sense and you like it explained? Is there anything at all? Anything about inline elements, block elements, HTML, CSS, how do computers work? Why are there consciousness? Why is there consciousness on Earth? Things of the like. OK. Well, in that case, we'll just get started. So uh, welcome to week three. We're going to be talking about the CSS box model. Uh, frankly, that's just a sort of paradigm which web designers use to think about how to lay out the page. Everything is a box essentially. And the way you lay them out uh, has various ways that you do that in code, and we're going to be talking about those. So not only will we talk about the box model, but we'll also be talking about some techniques for selection. So I gave you a couple so far. If you'll remember, I gave you that you can select an element within CSS just by putting that element name. So what I mean by element, I mean if you put the whole body tag, then everything in the body tag will, will have rules that apply to them, and those are the rules that you set. Uh, there's also IDs and classes, something that I briefly talked about last time. I'll go over that a little bit more right after this, but that's another way you can select elements. And soon you'll find that literally uh, for almost every permutation of element and, and uh, ID and even certain attributes, you can select just for those in particular with some neat CSS trick. Uh, and so we're going to be going over those two in addition to talking about the box model. So that's what we'll be talking about today. So just as a recap, uh, IDs and classes, so again, uh, IDs and classes are ways in which you can say, hey, there's an element that I want, but unfortunately, I cannot target it uh, unless, unless I give it a sort of label so that the CSS can, say, can look through uh, all, of the, all of the HTML code and see, um, look for those particular IDs, look for those particular classes. So why do we dis make a distinction be between the two? Why, why isn't there just an ID and you just, just target uh, certain things? And the reason for that is that, of course, when you're designing things, sometimes you really do reuse things. There are, there are themes to a page that you, that you reuse all the time that you wouldn't want to recreate again and again. Uh, for example, buttons. Typically, at least on good-looking web pages, you don't have buttons that, that literally change every page, and they look different every time. That would be a terrible mistake. So instead of doing that, uh, we have classes. So classes, you can reuse the code for that button, and, um, and it it's makes a lot more sense. Technically, I, I think this was asked last time, Technically, you can use an ID for everything, uh, and you can use it for multiple items on the same page, which is bad practices, by the way, but it will render. So uh, just for the sake of readability and passing on the code to anyone else who might work on it, use both IDs and classes the right way. Does anyone have any questions about those two things, IDs and classes? So something I really want to emphasize that I think really deserves its own slide uh, or just a series of slides, really, is that IDs use hashtags in the CSS file. So when you're targeting IDs, you know, hashtag, name of your ID, uh, open, print, open or curly brace, then you got all your rules there, and they have to be in the right syntax, too, which is property name, colon, value, semicolon, next property name, colon, uh, value, semicolon, et cetera, et cetera, close the curly brace. If it's not like that, then something will go wrong. But otherwise, uh, for the most part, that's, that's how you should do it. And so th this is exactly what I, what I just sort of weighed in the air, but now it's, uh, in, now it's on a slide. So the top part is the HTML. So this is what it looks like when you're using an ID. It's just ID equals whatever you call that ID. And then in the CSS, uh, just you know, this maps to that. So basically, every time uh, when you see ID, equal, uh, ID underscore example in the HTML, those CSS rules will apply to that element. 
Uh, likewise, you know, classes use periods as opposed to hashtags, and it looks like this. Oh, geez. Okay, well, uh, pretend that's all on the same line, and you have uh, class equals class example, um, and so for everything that's that has the class class example, the rules in the CSS will apply. So pretty straightforward. I think this is something that a lot of people really kind of get, like, okay, I understand that there are CSS rules and they apply to that which you assign them to. <coughs> but tonight, uh, we're going to be talking about the box model. So basically, every sort of pretty website that you've ever seen can be reduced to uh, boxes. And you really have to think of it this way in order to design what you want on a sketch into, uh, into an HTML page. So you really have to sort of understand this because it would, would save you a lot of, a lot of pain and, and questions and confusion in the future. So we're sort of setting the foundation right now for that. So I just wanted to walk through a sort of detailed case study. Uh, this is a web page that I personally designed uh, when I was taking this course. And basically in my mind, or at least on my sketch, uh, if you go to sort of the about, the about Us page or the Team page, you'd see these profiles. And so here are like three profiles stacked uh, horizontally. And they, have, they each have, you know, obviously an image, and they have a biography underneath them. And I was you know, thinking, like, how could I organize this? Or y before it became code, uh, you have to think about, how am I going to implement this, right? But if you just sort of reduce away all the, all the stuff that makes it seem complicated, and you just think about it in terms of, of you can abstract away so it's just, just this, just circles and rectangles. Now, there are sort of multiple ways to go about implementing this if you just try to start from scratch, right? Uh, can anyone think of one way you could try to organize your divs uh, to make this? Does anyone have any suggestions at all? A table. Okay, that's that's interesting. Uh, you. Uh, float. Okay. Um, sure, I mean, this, this is an, uh, an, a kind of uh, property that we'll be talking about later, but um, essentially, uh, one way that I, I could have done it, actually, is I could have imagined all the circles or the images as their own div, and you wrap it around like that, and then you stack that on top of a div that wraps around the three rectangles on the bottom. See that? So it's sort of top and bottom. But this is not really the best way because it wasn't the most uh, intuitive way that we think about the profiles, right? Like, we don't think of just the profile images as their own sort of stack and the bios as their own stack. We sort of think of them as profiles uh, horizontally, kind of like, kind of like just, just one of these stacked three times to the right, as opposed to a layer of images and a layer of bios, right? So this is a sort of like uh, almost architectural decisions. Not, not architecture as like building buildings, but uh, software architecture in the sense. Um, you're just, you have to think about like, well, how am I going to, to make this code so that when I reuse it, it's, it's smart? So you know, let's, let's go with this. The profile stacked like this. Uh, but this alone is obviously not a single element. It's uh, composed of mul elements by itself, too. So there's one for the image, and it's, it's vertically stacked on top of this biography box. Uh, and I want to wrap the whole thing in some other div, so that way I can reuse that, too. Does that make sense? Because if I can do this, then, then if I want to make three of them, or four of them, or n of them, or n is a gazillion, you know, it's, it's easy to do, because I, just, I can reuse code. Uh, naturally, you should also think about uh, what IDs, what should be IDs and what should be classes. So, you know, I just threw some, some classes out there. I, I'd say that the whole thing, I would probably call that a, a profile because, you know, that's, that's what it is. I would give the image, its uh, I would wrap the image in a div too, so the image tag would be wrapped in a div, and I'd probably wrap the bio in a div too. Notice how both the image and the bio are currently IDs, but as we saw in the page at the beginning, a lot of the attributes are really shared among all three of the profiles, right? They all have circular images, uh, and they all have the same formatting of the bio. So um, another way to think about this is what if I just took that code that I would have repeated uh, three separate times for each of the three people and just make that into a class? So in the case of the image, uh, if I want all images to be circular, I could just make a class called circular and include the CSS property which allows things to be circular. And that CSS property, by the way, is border radius colon 50%. Uh, and we can talk more about border radius. It makes a lot of sense, right? Because 50% of the element you're working with will be curved so that it'll be a full, complete circle. Um, and likewise, for the bio, there, there are certain rules that I, that I made apply there. And so 
uh, because they apply to every single one of them, why repeat myself when I can just say it once and then make it into a class and use a lot of classes? This is, you know, this is good. This is best practices in CSS. This is uh, not making foot guns for uh, the future. This is, this is good code that people can read and people will enjoy and you'll be a better person. So just again, you know, what should I make as an ID? Uh, well, what's unique about the three things is that the colors were different. That's definitely a unique thing. And so that alone, really, I think was the only real distinguishing factor between those profiles is that, you know, they were each a different color, so why not just make that the ID, just background color equals unique color. And then the rest, all the classes are the things that I, I reuse. So things like the fact that the images are circular, that the bios are formatted a certain way, et cetera, et cetera. Does anyone have any questions about that before I continue on? Question. That's a great question. So the question was, uh, is the positioning of the, of the uh, bios, the profiles unique? The answer to that is no. And the reason for that, and we're gonna be talking a lot about that actually very soon, is that in the CSS box model, we have uh, things called margins, aka distances between elements. So if you think about it, the distance between each of those elements was 10 pixels to the left. I could think of it that way, right? So each of the, let me go back a second. So each of these, uh, imagine has like, it's pushing 10 pixels to the left so that it's 10 pixels away from one another. That means the leftmost uh, of these profiles will be pushing against sort of nothing, but it'll still be 10 pixels away. The one to the right of it will be pushing against that first profile, and the one to the right of that will be pushed. So really the positioning has, has really evened itself out, even though we've applied it to all of them as opposed to unique to each of them. So that was a good question. The answer is, uh, it's generic. Question. How do you get it all centered? Great question. Uh, there, is, there are a lot of CSS tricks that we'll be going over very shortly. Uh, and so stay tuned for that. But the short answer is, uh, if, you, if you take the margins, aka, like I said, the distance between the closest element, and you set them to auto on both the left and right side, then they will auto adjust. So you don't have to do any funky calculations for every single possible web browser size. So margin left auto, margin right auto is the short answer for that. Question over there? Ah, great question. So the question was that, uh, you know, I, I use divs in this example, even though these profiles are uh, horizontally stacked, whereas I did, I did mention that divs are vertically stacked by default. That's very good. That's a very good point. Uh, and the thing is that indeed uh, spans are by default horizontally stacked. But the thing is that they don't. Uh, we'll talk about spans real quick. But they don't support um, width and height beyond what they need to. Uh, not width, just height. They don't support as uh, more height than they need to, whereas d divs do. And so there's a way that you there are tricks that you can get divs, which we would prefer to use to stack horizontally. Uh, in particular, we use float, which is what Tomas said, which we haven't gotten to yet, but that's how we use divs horizontally to get this. But that's a very good point. Are there any others that I can get to before we move on? Okay, cool. So, this is called the CSS box model. Everything is a box, and every box has some amount of sort of spacing between it. Uh, and there are basically four main components within uh, boxes. But just to prove to you that everything is really a box, this uh, uh, menagerie of boxes is, uh, is Facebook in a sense, right? <coughs> I mean, it, does, it certainly looks like the newsfeed. And that's really at, at its core how Facebook's newsfeed is organized, is just there are stories, which are their own divs. And within each story, there's the, the person's profile picture, which is, uh, which is definitely, you know, always in the upper uh, left corner. You know, these are things that you could easily imagine, like, hey, that, that would definitely be a class because you re repeat it, like, a gazillion times down your infinite scroll news feed. So uh, for that reason, you know, you can see here that it's, it really is just boxes. Anyway, like I said, four components. Uh, and those four components are the content of, of the div. So that is that which is between the two div tags. There's the padding. Uh, and padding, here's all the definitions. The padding is that the space that is between your content and your border. So what is a border? 
the border is that which surrounds your content. And the margin, like, like I said, the margin between the profiles, the margin is the space between your element and surrounding elements. These are things that you really want to sort of like really know. Because it really helps to translate sketches into, into code when you understand these really well. And like this is something that I, I really want to spend a lot of time on actually today to make sure that I, I want like a hundred percent understanding rate. People are like, oh, that's that's obviously a, a margin thing or a padding thing. Uh, and there will be a hands-on today actually that will go over that too. It's actually the hands-on today is really awesome. We're going to take this page, uh, and it's it's going to look like a sort of cluttered page, but then by the end, our awesome TAs will turn it into something like really solid, really awesome. So uh, get excited for that. But anyway. Here are the four things. Uh, in case some of this sounds ambiguous, like, well, what's the difference between padding and border, or, or border and margin? I th so to, to demonstrate that, I want you to think sort of physically. Like, think of an actual picture frame, right? So here is an actual picture frame of an actual really great sax player. And um, this I will use as my example for the, the, the four elements of the box model. The content. The most important part is is in the middle, right? So that's that's the picture of this legendary sax player. The padding is not the frame. It's not the frame. It's actually the distance between the content and the frame. So you'll see why this, this becomes important later. Like you can imagine styling a button. Uh, do you want your button to look tiny and claustrophobic compared to the text? Or maybe give it more space? Is that a padding problem? You bet it is. Um, there's also the border which is the actual frame itself. It does indeed surround the content, but not before surrounding the padding. And finally, there's the margin. So if you imagine multiple pictures uh, of this magnitude, then uh, they would be margin apart, whatever you set margin to. So I just want to talk about border in particular uh, and what it actually looks like in the CSS. <coughs> so for any given div element, if you wanted to uh, assign it a border, then it would it would look something like this, where you'd have the border property pointing to three values, two of which are optional. The first value is the width of the border. So you can imagine how thick do I want my frame? Do I want it one pixel thick, or uh, you know however many pixels you want? The second uh, thing that it takes in, this, the second value that it could take in, uh, is is the style of the of the border. So there's by default, it'll be solid, as you might expect, you know, just a solid border. But there's also some uh, sort of ob other obscure values they can put in there. Like in this case, there's dashed borders, which is sort of like dot dot dots. Um, and the final argument you or final value that you could put in is the color of the border that you want. And style and, and color are optional. Um, and if you want to see this, uh, we can let's see. Yeah, I'll quickly just do a quick JS Fiddle demonstration of this real quick. All right, what, what do you expect this to uh, render to, despite me having put it as the label? Oh, good point. So like, like I've so obviously put, it should indeed be a square, uh, a red square actually, with a dashed black line, three pixels thick. And indeed, that's exactly what it is. What do you know? So um, as you can see, it's, it's pretty standard. You know, uh, divs, again, the important property of divs is they don't have any height or width until you give them height and width. Therefore, I've given it a width, the same thing as its height, which is 50 pixels. Background is red, and um, and the border is is as it is. Anyway, just uh, do that real quick. 
Uh, padding and margin. All right, so here's just a couple of semantics about how padding and margin work, but it's, it's very similar. Uh, you, have, you put in padding, uh, and then you put in some value of pixels uh, for, for that padding. So you can actually put in anywhere between one and four uh, values for padding. If you put just one, it'll just do it all across the frame, all across the div. If you put in two, then the first one you put in goes above and below, and the next one goes left and right of it. Um, uh, so I understand that a lot of people in here are beginners, and so they don't like necessarily to be told there are like a gazillion way to ways to do this. Like they just want to know the one good way to do it. And so to answer that, I'd say the best way to apply padding is really one of these two, because typically that's how it's going to be. It's not going to be asymmetric padding necessarily. Uh, mostly you're going to be using these two. Also note that actually if you forget, you know, like if I have two, how does it apply? Is it is it this, uh, this? Um, you can always refer to these slides. That's one thing. But another thing, uh, there's also sort of other, other uh, property values like padding dash left, padding dash right, padding dash top, padding bottom. Uh, and so basically, if you really forget, which is me all the time, then you just put in padding left some value, padding right some value. And maybe it's easier to read that way for you. But uh, yeah, when you get really good, and you want to like compress your code, then you can basically use maybe three or four values and just put it all in one line. So uh, padding for for three values, you know, left so top is ten pixels in this case. Left and right would be five, and the bottom would be fifteen. Uh, let's see, and and the final one would be totally clockwise. So it's it would be you know top uh, right, your right, uh, bottom, and then left. Am I doing that right? I hope that's right. Top, right, bottom, left. So that's the order in which the paddings would apply. Very sort of obscure stuff, but just good to know uh, when you're applying padding and margin. So uh, everything I just said applies to margin as well. Uh, real quick, I just want to stop right there and ask, uh, does anyone have any confusions about padding and margin? Or, or uh, anything, any of those four, uh, four parts of the box model that I just mentioned? Question. Great question. Yeah. Uh, so the question was like, how, like, how how do you know how far from the edge of the page you'll be? Um, so so I think the one the one of uh, of these that, that most applies is what would be margin, obviously, because it's the distance between your element and the next element that it can find in that direction. And if that element if it can't find anything but the edge, it'll just push off of the edge. So uh, the answer to your question is it will. It will treat it like it's its own element, really, the side of the, the page. Good question. <coughs> ah, so currently, um, let's see. Do I want to go over this? Hmm. Yeah, I think, I think I'll save this actually for the positioning lecture, uh, just because I think it makes more sense there, and there's sort of like uh, an influx of information already thrown at you. But basically, this is how. Uh, there, there are different ways of, of stacking divs horizontally, like the question that we had earlier. Um, so I'm just going to skip past this for now. But we'll go back to this probably next, er, as early as next week. <coughs> okay. Uh, so we're going to switch gears right now, and I'm going to ask. Uh, we're going to talk about CSS selectors. So we just talked about the box model, you know, content, uh, padding, margin. And um, and that last one, padding margin border. Yes, border. Uh, so now we're going to talk about c CSS selectors uh, and different ways that you can select elements on a page. So there's definitely way more than just than just you know dot class and, and hashtag ID. So uh, for example, if you've put two element names, so if you put like for example body and p. Uh, or or um, or div and p, it would basically look in look in the fir uh, the last one. I'm sorry, it would look in the first the first one. So in this case, it would look in all divs, and it would select all the paragraph tags within divs. So this is sort of uh, incredibly useful. This is actually very very useful. I in case you want to target particular things and you don't want to target all of them, then there are actually a gazillion ways really in which you can select things in CSS. Um, that may not may be harder to appreciate before you've built a web page, but while you're doing it, you'll realize 
that like, wow, this is really awesome. This is like super particular. So yeah, if you have two element names, you can look for the second one within all instances of the first one. Did it, does everyone understand that so far? Why we're doing this and um, why it matters? The, the same goes for classes too. So there's actually an interesting little nuance regarding uh, selecting multiple classes. Uh, if you put a space between the two, it'll be have incredibly similar behavior to the one uh, that we just talked about. So uh, it'll look in all instances of class one for, for instances of class two, and, and it'll apply the style to that. By the way, when I say uh, look for instances, what I mean is that uh, if you imagine, if you imagine uh, two divs, and, and one has a nested div with class two, then it'll look for that particular instance. So uh, let me show what that looks like real quick. So uh, if we applied the CSS rules that I just said, um, where we have you know dot class space dot, dot class one space dot class two, it would look particular for this situation right here, where it says, oh look, here's dot class one. I'm going to look inside, inside here, for uh, instances of dot class two. And what do you know? The first one is an instance of of class two. I'm going to apply whatever styling I had in there to that particular element. But there's, uh, there's a whole difference, though, however, when you don't put a space between the two. When you don't put a space between the two, it actually looks for elements that are styled by both. So only if, if and only if, your element has uh, class equals class one, space class two, will it, will it look for uh, styling under, this, under these rules. Right. So that's just, uh, that's just something to look out for. Uh, here's something interesting. So there exist these really useful things uh, in, in the CSS called pseudo classes. Uh, and basically, they're, uh, they allow you to do some pretty cool stuff. So if you've always wondered like how some of the hover things happen on pages where you, your mouse hovers over something and then it changes to react to that, uh, that really starts right here. It starts where you, know, you have, uh, in this case, suppose we're looking at uh, hashtag pop up, it, uh, uh, ID pop up looks like something when something's not hovering over it. And then when you hover your mouse over it, it looks totally different. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to quickly do a demo. Alright, so if I run this, I should get this text here uh, that, that currently you know, looks pretty harmless, only 15 pixels uh, in terms of size, but then hovering over it suddenly, dramatically produces uh, a not very smooth transition, by the way, if you'll notice. It's like instantaneous, just bam, but uh, it, it does indeed change right? as a result of adding this, this hover pseudo class. <coughs> There are certainly ways of making this not so so sharp and choppy, uh, that are more designy and and uh, fluffy and and uh, pretty and things like that, uh, which Sean will go over. But otherwise, you know, this is how that that works. <coughs> uh, okay, so here's one that that sounds really complicated, but really is not, and that is nth child. So uh, you have the option of taking any element or ID or class and doing colon nth child. So what does that do? That looks for all, first of all, it looks for all instances of the element that you specified. And then it's going to look for the, the children of that element. What do I mean by children? I mean all, all elements which are nested 
under that under that element. Um, so in this case, uh, let's see. So in this case, uh, if we have this example down here where we have the p or the paragraph tag, uh, or the paragraph element rather, colon nth child three. So what does that do? Well, basically, it looks it looks for all uh, instances of the paragraph tag, which are the third the third uh, child of its parent. So um, in code, let's see. In code, uh, you can imagine that if I had if I had uh, the third if I had this apply and I had some rules in there where the comment is, uh, then basically for for this div class parent right here, where the class is actually the parent of all of those paragraph tags, uh, it would select <coughs> it would select that one because that is the third one. That why is that the third one? Because it's the third child of the of its parent. Its parent being that div with class equals parent. Uh, and it will select, in particular, that one. And not just that one, actually. If we had more, it would select every third. So. Th for every three, oh, okay, sorry, misspoke. It would actually select only the third one. However, if you have something like, th if you, instead of you put three, you put in three N, then it would actually pick every third. So if I had more P tags here, it would pick, uh, you know, three, six, nine, twelve, et cetera, et cetera. Question. That's a good question. Um, so it'll it'll actually really depend, and I'm sure you'll find more scenarios that I can think of off the top of my head right now. But um, anything that involves like a list structure, so for example, like like vertical navigation bars uh, and things like, maybe you want to style every certain one some some amount, and you want to do it very concisely. This is one way you could do you could use this. Is there any other use case? That All right, Sean, you got a use case? Right, preventing overflows, certainly. That's one reason. Uh, any other questions I can answer right now? If there aren't, uh, I think I'm gonna spend my last couple minutes just showing you guys something really fun. Uh, in case you wanna you wanna practice your CSS selection, there's this cool uh, game. I don't know the URL, but I know it's called CSS Diner. <coughs> so what does this do? Well, essentially, you have to write selectors so that you select exactly what it asks for here, right? So if I want to select just the the big apples, wait, is this this is the very, this is not the beginning. Let's start from the beginning. Okay. Okay, level one. So if I wanted to select the plates, what uh, what would I use to select it? Let's get an answer from the crowd. Let me blow it up real quick. Too much. Any idea of what I would blow it up, given that this, this right here is the code, right? So imagine if this were the code for this, uh, for this, for this element here. Uh, that's a that's a good guess, but notice here that that this actually um, the plate is actually its own element. It's not the plates aren't actually real elements, but for, for the sake of this practice, it is. So what would I put in here if I want to select all the plates? Plate, plate. It's pretty straightforward. And I selected all of them. Move on to level two. Uh, what's the command here? Select just the bento boxes. What would it be? Yep, all right. Let's, let's get something. So this is slightly more uh, interesting. Select just the fancy plate and not, not your standard plate. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it goes on for actually literally 26 levels, just like this. Um, Let's do something interesting. All right, select the top orange. How would you do that given that this here is the code? Real quick. So, so you got a pickle on here. You got this plate of oranges. First orange, how would that look syntactically? All right. 
Uh, over here. Yeah, sorry. Yep. Well, yes. Yes. Uh, indeed, you have to select the first element, uh, the first child of the plate element. That's true. But the way we do that syntactically is actually we only have to just remember oranges um, and then first child. And that selects the top one. So there's you know a ton of levels and like this this game is actually really fun in case you want to uh, try to beat it without looking on the right because I realized all the answers are right here, um, but yeah it's good practice. So that's all the ha uh, the time I have for you now. Uh, I think we will go to the programming hands-on that'll be hosted by uh, Tomas. So oh and Adam too. Hello. Today, este, 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 we're going to learn uh, how to use the class uh, and the ID. So we can see uh, the, the, the picture on the side. Este, can you open it? Nope, not that, not that one. Sorry again. Uh, second time happening uh, is is bad luck. No, right up. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, here. Yeah, index. No, no, I don't think it's that. Oh, oh I don't think it's that. Command three. It's your fault. <laughs> it's your fault. Uh, can you come, please? Thank you. Uh, uh, sorry again. <laughs> it's Sean's uh, laptop. Uh, it's very bad. No, it's it's not open. No. No, in go on GitHub and yeah, 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 Okay. Awesome. So we have, uh, uh, you know Hamza? <laughs> uh, Hamza is our favorite TA, so we made him a fan page. Uh, Hamza Licious, okay? <laughs> so let's go into uh, the code. So we can uh, see that uh, the six elements share share the uh, same class. Uh, uh, the class is called image, and we only need to define uh, one class uh, for the six images. Um, what if we want to um, position uh, uh, the three hamsas uh, per row? Um, what do we do? <laughs> okay, uh, let's first uh, use the uh, use the install uh, uh, selector. Uh, 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 let's, uh, uh, let's do image. Yeah, uh, image uh, 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 a colon, and ends, uh, the end child and three n. So what um, three n will do is gonna select uh, each uh, as the three hamsters, okay? And let's set uh, 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 the margin right to to zero. Yeah, good. 
now let's go into container and let's set the width uh, of the container. Uh, because uh, I'm really bad with math, uh, I use uh, this tool uh, called calc that will calculate uh, the width for, uh, uh, for me. So we use calc and then uh, 210 uh, pixels. Uh, you can see that uh, each Hamza uh, has a 200 pixel width uh, plus five, uh, five uh, to 10, and then uh, plus uh, 40 uh, 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 pixels. Yeah, plus 40 pixels uh, of margin right, right? So let's go into in the site. And we can see that that they are all aligned. Uh, uh, three elements per uh, per row. Uh, let's uh, let's go and see um, what's the box model for each of the, um, the images. Uh, can you go into image? Um, a little bit? No, no, no. Here you can see uh, that. That the images uh, have a um, 20 margin right and 20 margin bottom. Uh, let's go into the third uh, 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 third Hamza. Uh, there's uh, no margin right, right? Uh, let's go on uh, um, uh, to the CSS and let's eliminate the um, uh, 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 the margin bottom of the last uh, three Hamzas. Okay, let's do image. Uh, let's do uh, uh, the end, uh, last, uh, last child, last child, uh, uh, then uh, do one, uh, then comma, uh, and then copy in the whole, uh, whole thing uh, uh, three times, yeah, one, two, and three. So, so what do you think this will do? You. <laughs> yes, good job. Uh, now let's do margin um, 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 bottom uh, zero pixels. And now let's go into the site and and let's see uh, what's the box model of the last elements. Okay. Continue. Uh, no, uh, no margin. Yeah. And now uh, let's use uh, the, uh, the IDs. Uh, let's choose an ID for each, uh, uh, each Hamza. Um, how should we call the first uh, uh, Hamza? Uh, uh, how should we call it? All right. Um, what's the name of this ID? Uh, uh, how should we call it? You. Uh, how should we call it? Yeah, majestic Hamza. Okay, good, good. <laughs> okay, majestic Hamza. Now, who uh, who wants uh, uh, to say the next one? You. Um, what's the next one? Yes. Uh, <laughs> go into the next one. Sorry. Zoom, zoom, uh, zoom on that, please. No. Yeah. Okay. So, um, how do we call it? Okay. 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 Pupin Hamza. Okay. Next one. Okay. Uh, Popeye, in just space. Here, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. S uh, sorry, it's a little bit slow. The <laughs> uh, next one? Oh, okay, what's the name of this one? Indian. Okay, Indian Hamza. Uh, not racist, no. <laughs> next one? Uh, shout it. Hmm? Yeah. Okay, graduate, Hamza. <laughs> and the last one? Wild hey. Hamza. Wild Hamza. <laughs> Wild Hamza. Okay, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> now uh, let's go into the CSS styles and let's make a, 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 some styles. Okay, CSS, uh, let's create a hashtag, a majestic. Uh, you more. Uh, any questions uh, till now? <laughs> any questions? No? Okay, good. Excellent. Oh, you. Um, is it like a strong style? Is it no factor? 
Yes. Any other question? Okay. Well, uh, let's set uh, the border color uh, to, uh, uh, let's say, orange. Uh, the next one, light green. A uh, purple. A uh, brown. Okay. Okay, any color. Any color. Any color you like? Pink, pink. He, he likes pink. Okay. Okay, um, your color. Okay, awesome. Uh, let's see it. Oh, wow. <laughs> A colorful Hamza. <laughs> okay, now uh, what if we use in the hover effect? Uh, how do I implement hover effect? You, uh, how do I implement it? For anyone. Okay. Awesome. Wait, but uh, yeah, yeah. You, you, you copy it. No, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. In border style, and let's say in dashed. Okay, next one. I, I, let's say. Um, what's another one? Uh, any recommendations in, in double? Okay, uh, next one. Let's say dotted. Okay. Oh. Reach. And the last one will be. Um, okay, oh no, more. You need uh, to add a hover to. You can see uh, that like coding website is a lot of like copying and pasting, so. <laughs> It's a lot of other places. Hey, ask Sean. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> okay, okay. And now go to the site, and you can see that um, when you hover around it, oh, wow. <laughs> and there you go, yeah. That's it. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> Any questions? Okay. Okay, I hope you guys had a great break. Um, so this week will be the first of our uh, UI aesthetics lecture based on spacing. And it's going to be um, based on um, spacing using CSS box model. So in our previous tasks, we talked about the design cycle. Um, include in from starting off from ideation to prototyping and to evaluation, and then we talk about why. Oh, okay. What is the purpose of UI design? Is this thing more okay. complexy? How do we do that? Uh, we do that by emphasizing important elements like over this. less important uh, elements. Like that's, that's and that's we do it through spacing, like typography, okay. and images, okay. finishing, Sometimes and color. And today is we'll be we we'll be covering the first part, which is spacing. Um, we're gonna, there are two types of spacing. One is macro level spacing, and the other is micro level spacing. We learn how to do both um, using the stuff that you learned in programming lecture today, which is CSS box model. So before we get into actual um, spacing stuff, because we're going to be doing a lot of CSS related activities, let's first review Web Inspector. Um, I'm pretty sure a lot of you have had great practice using Web Inspector in your homework too. Um, I, um, I hope that you guys are pretty familiar with Web Inspector. Um, I'm just doing this just to refresh and get you prepped for whatever CSS activities we're going to be doing throughout the semester. So again, these are, this is the design workflow. Start off with the HTML, second is CSS, and third is JavaScript. In the programming hands-on today, um, Tomas and Adam used 
um, the code editor. They wrote code from scratch on the code editor. I don't recommend it. I think that you should write the CSS in your web inspector and then pull over the code to your um, to your code editor because you, you saw how like they were doing a lot of copy pasting and, and stuff like that. But for if you use the web inspector, you won't have to do that. You can see the changes that you make um, on the fly. So um, how to open the web inspector? We went up. How to use web inspector? Uh, you right click inspect element. Pretty sure this is pretty straightforward. Adding new style. How would you do that? Right click, uh, no, click on the top right, the plus icon. And if you want to change an existing CSS style rule, you're going to click on the empty space inside the CSS selector. Um, and up to so far from up to so far, this is pretty straightforward. You just like adding your CSS files. But the question that we receive a lot is how do you save those changes? You go to a tab called Sources. And in the Sources tab, you're going to find a CSS, the actual CSS file that you modify. And you copy everything and save it to your um, code editor. So to give you a demo, let's say I modified something on a Zen Decal website. Right click Inspect Element to open up the inspector. Let's zoom in. Um, Let's say I change the cover background to red. Um, and now, now that, I ta that I've changed it, I click on sources. Try to find the file. It's not over here. So I'm going to try looking into the folder. CSS. There it is, promotional.css. I copy everything and then go to code editor and then copy, overwrite whatever I have on the start of CSS, if that was start of CSS. Okay. So this is a lot easier than trying to write up the CSS from scratch in your code editor, because what happens is if you write it over here, let's say I do like cover is background red. I'm not sure how it will actually look on my website, versus if I do it over here, as I change the code, I can immediately see the changes that I'm making. And it's a lot easier to work work with CSS this way. Any questions regarding Web Inspector? Cool. So now we're going to get to spacing. Um, again, the goal of the user interface is to bring order, com order to complexity by emphasizing important elements. Four ways. The first is spacing. Before we get to spacing, I'd like to um, do a little bit of a UI crit critique. Um, let's first review some of the UIs that demonstrate bad examples of spacing. What's wrong with this UI right here? Hands. Like, I, I want some opinions regarding this. So it's all called user interface. I hear crammed. I hear cluttered. I mean, there are a lot of things to point out. Yeah. Everything is emphasized, so you don't know what to look at. And that is very great. Everything is emphasized. There is no visual hierarchy. That is a very, that's pretty much the answer. What about this one? People do play games like this. <laughs> what is wrong with this, this gaming interface? Wait, what? what? Yeah, so what I've heard was that uh, the plugins, the, the plugin panels are getting in the way of the gameplay. So, how many of you have played World of Warcraft? Yeah, I hear a few hands. Um, <laughs> I, I see a few hands. Uh, the, the most important element in World of Warcraft is you, the, your character, right? So, obviously, your character needs to be visible at all times. I don't even know where my character is right now. The green, see this red paladin, I think? That is the character. But it's really hard to see. It's really hard to find. You're trying to like, kill a monster. You can't see the monster. How are you going to kill it? Even if you have the plugins, if, if, if the plugins get in the way, it's actually hindering the, the user experience. So a common theme around these two user interfaces that we've seen is that they are cluttered. 
So what is the definition of cluttered? It means that it lacks spacing. And spacing really ma makes or breaks user interface because it's not always a good idea to just cram in as much information as possible. So what a lot of people do when they critique user, interf user interface is that they're going to look at a UI and they're like, well, what about this all wasted space on the left and right? And I think that it's not a wasted space. It's Think of it like I, I, as a white space that enhances the actual content in your web page. Because after all, Quantity of, of the user interface, the quantity of content is less important, is not as important as the quality of, of the content, the quality of the user experience that the user is getting. I mean, there isn't much cost for the user to scroll down and see more content versus getting all information in one place and it's like not knowing where to focus their attention to. So, a good example of spacing outside of user interface would be an app store. Can you tell me why this would be a great reason, a uh, great example of spacing? Thoughts? Yeah. Everything is separated by like the type of electronics so you know where to go. That is very, very good. So um, in Apple Store, there is a dedicated table for iPhone, dedicated table for iPad, Mac, and stuff like that. And between each table, there is a very large um, spacing between the tables, so and so called margins between, between the tables. And this gives the, user, the visitors more room to walk around and, and focus on exploring that product and only that product and not get distracted by other products and promotions. So you can apply the same technique in user interface. So there are two types of spaces in the interface. One is positive space. Positive space is the, is the space that's filled up by content. This is um, the whatever article that you're reading. And negative space is the empty space surrounding the, the content, like the, empty, the white space surrounding the article. And what it does is the white space helps you define, it acts like a spotlight for the actor. You have the actor, but you also need a spotlight to like shine, let the actor shine. And think of the white space or the empty space as the means to accomplish the spotlight effect. So if you look at this picture, for example, do you see a base or do you see two faces? How many of you see a base, a white base? What about, what about two faces? It's interesting. Usually we get a mix <laughs> half and half. Um, it depends on the lighting, too. But I think that this room is a little bit dark. You kind of see more of the white face, I think. Um, so the answers are both correct. Um, this is just to show you an example of how what the effect of negative space. If you didn't have the contrast between white and black, pretend the two faces, the black area, did not exist. You would not think that that white area would be a base without these two surrounding black areas. Similarly, you would not think that these two faces would be like black faces if you don't see a white area in the middle. So the empty space, so the white space, um, acts as a spotlight to shine, let the content, whether, whether it's a, a base or two faces, um, stand out from the rest of the content. There are two types of spacing. One is macro level spacing. I'm going to get to this first because this is extremely important. Um, this is everything that you've discussed in programming lecture using CSS box model. Um, we use this to give structure to your interface. Um, you would give more room, more margin, or more padding to give it more emphasis. Um, and you give less room to reduce the emphasis for an element. Um, to give you an example, Google. Um, they gave a lot of white space surrounding their search bar to direct the user's attention towards their search bar. This would be an example of macro level spacing. On a larger scale, they gave a lot of padding around the search bar to give it greater emphasis. Another example would be radio, RDO. Um, again, similarly, the search bar, a lot of padding. And notice how the content area the, the thumbnails is, has a pretty good margin separating it from the sidebar um, to give the users at, to direct the users' attention to the content instead of the sidebar. And even within the content area, between each album, there is a very even spacing 
to um, direct users' attention to individual albums. This is a great looking portfolio website called Jonathan Patterson's website. Um, I couldn't even use this for our, my color lecture, but I'm going to use this for a spacing because um, it's a grid based interface. Um, to give you a demo, bookmarks. So this is his website. And notice that for each, within each grid, he gives very large amount of spacing or padding to the, to the content inside the grid user interface. If you click on it, if you click on it, you can see the same thing. Again, very large amount of padding to direct users' attention to the content. So we accomplished this using CSS box model. Um, can anyone tell me, again, a recall from the lecture, in the programming lecture, what are the four elements to CSS box model? There are four things into the CSS box model. Where, like, let's go one by one. Uh, what would be one thing? Content. Content, yep. Padding. Padding, you have two. Border. Border. Margin. margin. Content, padding, margin, border. I, met, I, I, I said it in this order because what the innermost element is the content, padding surrounds the content, margin surrounds the padding, and then, no, <laughs> sorry. Content, padding surrounds content, border surrounds padding, margin surrounds border. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> so now, a lot of questions that we receive is that, what is the difference between margin and padding? I mean, sure, everyone knows what content is, everyone knows what a border is, but when should I use padding, and when should I use margin? This is a question that we receive the most throughout the semester we've been teaching. And the answer is, you use padding if you want to give it inner spacing, and if you use margin to give it outer spacing. So if you want to apply space within an element, you use padding. If you want to separate one element from another element, you would use margin. Um, to give you an example, here we have a Google Now. Notice that, let's, let's look at one car, for example, the Lufthansa 9228, the airline received, the boarding pass. The space, the white, literally color white space surrounding the text, that's padding because that is inner spacing for this card. The spacing between each cards, those are margins because this is a spacing applied between one card versus another card. So if you want to separate one card from, if you want to separate the boarding pass card from relevant website card, you use margin. But if you want to just add more white background color to the boarding pass, the, the spacing, the inner spacing, you use padding. Do you have any questions regarding padding versus margin? This is extremely important. A lot of people mess up. You're going to do this in our uh, hands-ons too, but um, it is very important that you use margin only to separate an element from another element, and you use padding only to give it um, inner spacing. Um, one dif key difference is that if you use margin, the background color will not be applied. If you use padding, the background color will be applied. To show in you an example on JS Fiddle, um, jsfiddle.net, let me quickly create some boxes. Here we have two boxes. What should I do to separate green box from the blue box? The keyword is separate. Separate green box from the blue box. Margin. 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 So you apply margin bottom, 24 pixels. 
and it's going to separate it. So let's assume that inside rect, I had a square. And a square will have <coughs> width of 60 pixels and height of 60 pixels and background view white. It's going to look like this. So what should I do to push the square inwards? Padding. Onto rect. Notice that by adding the padding, this green box got larger than the blue box. It's because if you think about it, the blue box had width 120 by height 120. The green box had width 120 and height 120 plus padding of 10 that surrounds, that surrounds the green box with 10 pixel padding um, top left, bottom right. So that makes it a width of 140 and height of 140. Yeah? What if you don't want the size of the box to change? You don't want, how would you, so you're, you're saying you want to push the square inwards but not yeah. want the size to change. You're going to have to change this. Yeah. Oh, did I, was my calculation wrong? Yeah. yeah, you're going to have to change the width and height. Yep. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. Can you like add margins to the white box? Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that might work. That might work. Let me just try. The width was 120. Looks like this. Let's add margin 10. See, notice that it shifted from the left, but it never shifts it from the top. <coughs> Margin's going to do these like funky stuff. Um, it's not going to, uh, the margin top will work if it, if it has another element on top of it. Again, margin is used to separate itself from another element, but this square does not have another element to like detach from. So it can't do margin top. Yep. So how do you know what, what pixels you What number? What do you mean what number? Like how, how much padding you're yeah. saying? You're going to get to the end of it. Any other questions? Yeah. I'm a little confused why the margin top wouldn't push it down, because you do have an element, uh, what is it, the rectangle above it? This is not above it. It's, it's square is inside the rectangle. It doesn't have a sibling, right? Yeah. All right. So yeah, rectangle is not next to it. It's above it. So yeah. So another type of spacing is micro level spacing. Um, it's used to increase the legibility of the text um, in a bit. Um, when, whereas macro level spacing is all about the box model and like giving it a more room to breathe for that surrounding box, micro level is all about the text, um, how to increase legibility of the text. And we do it through line height, line spacing, and letter spacing. Today we're going to only cover line spacing. And this is very useful if you want to create a blog, because blog is all about the text, the content, and you need a very good amount of line spacing. To give you an example, again, one of the best blogging websites out there, Medium, um, they have a very ample amount of line spacing between their, each of their lines. Um, notice how each line is very evenly spaced. There's a very great amount of room, to, room for breeding. Another example is Apple. Same thing. The lines are not, never, the, all, the text lines, the lines are never next, stuck together to each other. There's always, some amount of spacing between each line. So li it's all accomplished through one property called line height. It's very easy to use. To do that, what you would do is you normally apply 1.5 times whatever your font size is. So if your font size was 24 pixels, a good amount of line height would be anywhere from 36 to 48. Anywhere from 1.5 to 2 times whatever your font size is. That's going to be the good line height to use for your website. An effect to be something like this. On the top, we have no line height applied. You notice how the sentences are like next to each other. It, it's kind of hard to read. Versus on the bottom, we have line height of 32 pixels. 
Uh, by the way, the font size is 16 pixels. So in this case, I used uh, double, the double the font size. And notice that it's a lot easier to read now that there's spacing between each line. Another thing that's really important is the paragraph width. Um, what people do is they don't apply any CSS, and what happens is their text goes all the way from the left edge of the screen all the way to the right edge of the screen, and then it overwraps and, and it wraps around. Imagine what would happen if someone is viewing your blog on a 27-inch iMac, huge screen, and the text would be really hard to read because people have short attention span. And they can't really parse through all the information, remember everything, if, if the text is from left edge to the right edge. So a good rule of thumb is to limit the width of your paragraph to anywhere from 640 to 720 pixels if it's a text, like text-heavy paragraph. Um, make it 960 pixels if you're making like a general website. Um, so you use containers to restrict the width of your text. Here's an example. Um, on the top, we have no max width. We have text going from left edge to right edge. It's kind of hard to read. And this is on a 15-inch laptop. If, you're, if someone's viewing it on 27-inch iMac, this is going to be a pain, in the, pain to read. <laughs> <laughs> um, on the bottom, we have a, a 720 pixel max width. So now it's a lot easier for the readers to read your paragraphs. Any questions? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was curious, like, how do you incorporate that into your design, like, design for mobile? That is very, very true. I am going to cover that in my responsive design lecture. But usually, for mobile, for, for desktop, you'd, have, you'd limit it to 720 pixels. But obviously, on mobile, the max width is, for iPhone, is 320 pixels. So you're going to have to change your CSS to, instead of giving it a max width, just add some 15 pixel padding around it. I think that's enough for mobile. Any other questions? regarding micro level spacing. Yeah. Um, so when we were working on with the boxes yeah. in the JSON, it was could you have put like uh, an element above the square that had just like nothing zero height? You could. And it would have you could. Yeah. But that's not desired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because okay, um, so next topic that I want to discuss is the metrics. Uh, one person asked, um, so how much padding should you give? Like, should I give, how did I choose this out of nowhere 10 pixel or 24 pixels? So it is very important to keep your metrics consistent. Notice how in my previous example, I used a width of 120 and height of 120. And the margin and padding, uh, the margin was 24 pixels. I used a multiple of 24. Um, it is very important. It is useful to use simple multiples for your spacing metrics. Um, for medium size spacing, you use 24. Um, small amount of small amount of spacing, 12. Width 120, height 120. Keep it to a consistent multiples of numbers. For me, I use 12 a lot. Um, so yeah, if I were to incorporate this with micro level spacing, similarly, the font size 16 pixels, line height 32 pixels. Again, multiples of fours or 16 and stuff like that. Um, why is this important? Um, if your spacing is not consistent, there's no other way to describe it that it looks off. So on the left, we have um, inconsistent spacing, inconsistent margin separating the box with, from the content. And because I think the top margin is around 20 pixels, whereas the margin left from the content is around only like 5. So if I were to change this, you would change it to the, on, to the right. We have margin top 20 and margin left 20 to give it an even amount of spacing. I don't have time, so I'm going to move on to uh, my last point. What happened in a lot of our project presentations past two semesters was that people would come up and they would be like, so my design philosophy behind my website was to go simple. Simple is not barren. A lot of people make the mistake of giving too much spacing. And what that does is it makes their website look barren. So it's, white space is important, but at the same time, it's important not to overuse spacing. 
Um, for applications, you wouldn't usually have spacing anywhere greater than 20 pixels because anything beyond that, it gets like, it, there's too much spacing around the content. And um, there's too much distance from one element to another, and it actually diverts users' attention. To give you an example of some websites that are a li little bit barren, uh, we have Ruby on Rails decal. Amazing class. I highly encourage you to take it. If I were to point out one example from their website, it would be that their website looked a little bit barren. Um, notice that from the content on the right of his face, there's too much margin between the face and the content. So it seems like they're not that connected to each other. And notice on the padding top and bottom, too much spacing. Um, um, separating this content from the other elements. I honestly don't think that this content is that important to give this much emphasis. So um, this should be an example of a little bit barren website. <coughs> so why is it barren? Margin and patterns that are too large breaks the relationship between elements. Um, to give you another example, now we have this. Um, this, I would say, is barren because content is simply floating in the middle of nowhere. So if I, a better way to design this would be, let me just go on their website and like edit it live. <laughs> you should send it to them afterwards. No, no I, I love them. They're, they're cool people. <laughs> <laughs> Inspect elements, power of web inspector. Um, let's say I have container. Uh, I'm just going to win height. Ah, my not. Body, I'm going to change background. You don't you usually don't want your content to float in the middle of nowhere. So content, I'll give it a background of white. Uh, position relative. You don't have to know all these attributes that I'm typing out. Just, just notice the spacing. This is a little bit better. How else you improve this a little just a bit better? Surrounding the white box. Padding. Padding. Perfect. Padding. So I give it a padding of 20, 20 pixels. And I think this looks way better. Yeah. Um, now the content is not floating. The text is not floating on, on the middle of nowhere. It has some sen sense of closure surrounding the content. It actually gives better emphasis towards the content. Yeah? Yeah, in this scenario, um, would you center the box too? Yeah, I would center the box. Um, I just did it for demo purposes, but yeah. So notice how on Google, there, there's a difference between, there, so for Google, the only, em, the only element that is getting the emphasis is the search. But over here, the emphasis is diverted to 2014 fall and updates. There are two directions for the emphasis, whereas there, even though it, this person is applying a lot of spacing. So it's all about like, I think there are two things. Number one is direction. You have to have one direction towards, one strong direction towards an element. And second important thing is, does this element really need this much emphasis? Um, for example, in home over here, I'm not sure if this deserves this much, like the instructor deserves this much emphasis for, the, for, for this website versus Google, a search bar is truly very, very important for Google. Any other questions? Okay. Moving on, we, I think that's pretty much it for spacing. Review, we had macro level spacing, uh, we had CSS box model, padding versus margin. What is the difference between padding and margin? Can anyone answer? Just recap, difference between padding and margin. Yeah, yeah, maybe a little bit. I think that's a little bit too de dictionary definition, but um, yeah. Padding's inside of your element and it's going to have the same background. Yes, that's a, very, that's a key difference. Um, and margin should only be used to separate one element from another element. Um, second type of spacing is micro level spacing. It influences legibility. You want to have maximum width for your paragraph and you want to have 1.5 to 2 times whatever your font size is for your line height. And make sure that your spacing makes your UI simple, not barren. 
But if you're interested in taking learning more about backend, I highly recommend you check out Radio State Cal out. They're, they're awesome class. So now we're going to talk about uh, the hands-on lecture for design. And we're going to be doing CSS box model. Hello. I'm Ingrid. This is Sarah, in case you forgot. Um, we're going to do an example. And I think you can download the files too. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you want to follow along, it's in the hands-on files on the portal. But this is um, a blog website. We're going to edit it because everything looks really bad right now. So uh, yeah, OK. So before we start, what do you guys think we can change and improve on for this website? For what? Like the everything? Yeah, that looks okay, but like spacing between everything else, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's start with um, the text. So if you look at the text, and you can edit along with us if you use your web inspector. So right click and web inspector. So we wanted to edit the text, which is the like small blog posts. Um, so which div should we look at? Oh. I guess. <laughs> but which div should we look at to edit the paragraph text? This one, this one, this one, Tell this us to one. Tell us to stop. Or just say the name. Container, this one. So um, we just want to space the paragraph portion, just like the, the paragraph text portion. Blog paragraph, yeah. So if you click on blog paragraph and then click the plus on the right, yeah, we can add new styles. So what should we do? Should we do margin or padding around the text to make it to make space? Who think it's margin? Who think it's padding? Okay, I think more people said padding. So let's try padding. Um, can someone give me a number, like a pixel number? 10? OK. And if you can move over. So it did go down a little. Did it? We should use a bigger number so we can see. Yeah. So you can see that it created space between the subtitle and the paragraph. And but what do you think will happen if we used a uh, margin? We can try. Like if we use margin, what would be the difference? Someone was saying something. So if you use margin we apply it outside the paragraph. Yes. That's correct. So we wanted to apply not outside the thing, but inside and around just the text paragraph portion. Yeah, OK, so next we want to apply um, padding for, or not padding, but any space for the title, because the title is very close to the picture right now. So what we do? Margin. Margin. How much? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, something we can actually do is select this entire container. Um, so if we want to add padding to this entire container here, um, to sort of separate it out, like unstick it from the edges, then we can just add padding here. Okay. In the class. Yeah. So that everything. So it creates um, padding around the whole square instead of the whole like square instead of just on top of the title. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, where else do you guys think we should put padding? Do you guys like how all the pictures are kind of stuck together right now? Or do you think there should be more room there? Yeah, that's a good idea. So let's put margin. Let's do around like 20 pixels. 
then we'll see that each of these blog containers are now like separate cards, more like a card UI. Yeah. OK. Cool. Wait, does he mean? Oh, yeah. 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 OK, so if you look on the top, you can see there's like home and then a contact. And they're all really stuck together. So how do we put make space so the top bar is both wider, or like height will be bigger, and also the text won't be all stuck together. Margin. So let's try that. So if you click the nav bar and you apply margin of. Was that what we wanted to do? Now the nav bar is sort of separated from everything else, right? Yeah. So do do we want outer space or inner space? Inner. Yeah, inner. So you gotta go inside. Mm -hmm. um, and now if we choose inner space, then we look more like a nav bar. Oh. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So how do we space each um, word now? So if you see how Sarah's applying margin left, because we only want margin on one side, we don't want margin on every around the whole word. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so we finished our macro level spacing, but we also want micro level spacing, right? Um, kind of right now, the text is a bit hard to read because it's all squished together. Okay. So how come you only had to apply? Did you um, did you apply it to like the UL part, or did you just apply oh the UL? Yeah. How come? If Oh, so the CSS style I added it to is um, hashtag navbar items oh, okay. li. So basically, it looks inside the navbar items ID um, and then applies to all the li's within that. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, let's go back to the micro level spacing. Are we happy with the spacing in between the lines right now? Like this lorem ipsum. If we wanted to, <laughs> I see someone shaking their head. If we wanted to increase the spacing in between those lines, what sort of CSS property should we work with? Line spacing. Line spacing? OK. Um, Is there any other CSS property we can use? Someone said it? Yes. Mm -hmm. So as Sean said, about 1.5 to 2 times the font size is about good for spacing. So we can do like 1.5 EM. And what EM stands for is basically it takes the current font size and it just scales according to that. So doing 1.5 EM is like equivalent to multiplying the font size by 1.5. That way, if I change the font size as well, the spacing will also change. So for instance, if I change that to like 20, my spacing is also increasing. OK, and lastly, um, if you look at the subtitle, it's very close to both the title and the paragraph text. So how should we separate that from margin? margin. OK. And maybe also on the top. Um, and a way that we can actually combine a lot of the margins is by remembering that margin left, top, and bottom, um, we can sort of all combine them with the counter or the clockwise version of things. So it's like top, then right, bottom, and left, right? So we can do margin, five pixels, and then on the right, we want zero pixels, right? And on the bottom, we again want 15 pixels. And on the left, we also want zero pixels. Um, so doing that is equivalent. Yeah. 
Do you guys have any questions? Questions? Okay. Um, so at this point, we'll do the check-in. Um, so the word of the day, or the lower lips word of the day is singulus. Wait, Phil, can you? <laughs> Okay. Whoops, I blew it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. That's it for hands on. Um, before we end the class, uh, what and while the hands, while the, while Philip is passing around the, the hands on the Lord Mason Water of the Day, I'd like to make some announcements. So homework three will be re released tomorrow night, uh, tomorrow evening I think, and along with the instructions for your group project. Um, did everyone, did anyone not get assigned a group project partner? Okay, so you should meet up with your group project partner sometime this week because the project is due on October 21st. Um, basically, it's going to be a redesign of IMDb, a movie we played. And along the way, we're going to have a check-in with your assigned TA on October 11th. What's going to happen is we're, gonna, we're not going to have Offstar on the weekend of October 11th. And we're going to do a mandatory check-in with your group. So um, you're going to be meeting up with your TAs. And um, we're going to evaluate your design so far. And we're going to give you feedbacks. So those are the announcements. Do you have any questions regarding the group project or the homework? Or any other stuff that so far that we've discussed so far? Any questions? OK, cool. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.